Do you feel like you're trying to delegate in your business, but it's not really seeming to work? Do you feel like you're always trying to find time to work on the most important things and the things that are gonna move the needle forward, but you're just drowning in every task in your business? Well, I can totally relate and I have been there before. And let me tell you, delegating is not as easy as it seems. It's definitely a process where you're gonna spend more time up front to then see the return on investment later. But during the process, if you don't delegate things properly, it may feel like you're just swarming in more work now, trying to delegate, fix mistakes, manage all the above. So in this video, I'm actually gonna give you four tips on how to make delegation easier with ClickUp. When it comes to delegation or really anything in your business, you need a system. When you have a clear system for how to delegate, how to remind yourself of something that you need to delegate, a place for all the resources that your team can find when trying to learn a new process, it all comes down to really having a clear system and structure in place. So with that, let's dive in. So tip number one, making delegating easier means having your process clearly mapped out so that you can clearly see what things can be handed off to a team member that you don't have to do. One great example of this that I could show you is our workflow mapping template. This is available in our shop and our template vault if you are interested in checking it out. This is available in our shop and our template vault if you are interested in checking it out. But let me just show you how it visually will show you every single thing that you have to do within a project so you can clearly pick and choose what you're able to delegate. Okay, so here you can see this is where a project is mapped out by phases. It has all the tasks, dependencies, um, due dates. So you can see like in Gantt view how this flows with team members, right? If one person is lagging, it's going to move the whole project forward, etc. I won't get into the nitty gritty details of this. And we have other tutorials on our channel that go through this process as well. But what you can see in here here, even just from the onboarding checklist, is once you map out everything that you have to do for a process in your business, or maybe it's a client project, for example, onboarding, setting up the ClickUp project folder, sending contract invoice, invoice or proposal, ordering the client gift, um, creating the client dashboard, etc. These things do not have to be done by you. A lot of things, especially when it comes to admin, that is one of the easiest things to be able to delegate because it's very straightforward. So once you map out your whole process, you have everything visually in ClickUp, you can then say, okay, now I'm going to go ahead and delegate this to a different team member. We're going to also get into SOPs and how it makes it even easier because you don't actually have to like grab a call to explain things to them. You could just stick a video in the task. But that is tip number one, just making sure that you have your processes mapped out in a clear way so you can see what can be handed off to a team member immediately. The second tip is... I love ClickUp tags. They are so helpful. And now with the new automations, I am so stoked. If you didn't hear the news, ClickUp recently released a new update where you can trigger automations from adding or removing a tag. So it makes this actually that much more powerful. I have a tag in my entire ClickUp workspace called delegate because realistically there are times where you're in the moment and you're doing something and you're like, I don't have to be doing this task in my business. I can easily hand this off to another team member, but I'm on a roll. I'm doing my job. I do not have time to sit down and create an SOP and what needs to be done to hand this off to a team member. So a hack that I have is I have a tag called delegate in my ClickUp. So anytime I am working on a task, let's see, log into all softwares or something in the onboarding checklist, I will just go ahead and tag this as delegate. So I know that I can reference it later and be like, what was that thing I wanted to hand off to a team member and then create the proper SOP. Now, if you're not familiar with tags and ClickUp, let me give you a quick tip. 
Tags are at the space level. So because I have this delegate tag in this workflow mapping template, if I went to client tasks, for example, now it is going to be in here as well. It is not going to be in the other spaces unless I create it in there, but then I would definitely wanna make sure it's the same color or you just bring in a task. So if I just did task name, this is just a little bonus tip in here. And I put on the delegate tab and then I did, let's move this to um, marketing and PR, marketing tasks, okay? So now if I come to marketing tasks and I open up and I see that task there, delegate, now this delegate tag will now be living in my marketing and PR space as well. So when you're creating a new tag, sometimes tags will be space level, right? Like you can see the other tags I have in marketing and PR, blog, carousel, email, Facebook, etc. I don't need those in operations. I'm going to let those live in marketing and PR, but delegate, that's something that I would definitely consider important in every single space because there may be things that you can delegate in all spaces. So one other tip for this is now with the new automations, you can even take it a step further and create a new automation that when a tag is added and you choose the tag delegate, it then changes the assignee to you or maybe your project manager. And then you can even say add a due date for let's say seven days after the trigger date or something like that. Another thing is maybe you don't want to change the assignee because, you know, this is a task that you're actively working on and you have to get it done that day. So maybe the other option is you create a list called to delegate. And when you add that tag, then it actually duplicates that task into the delegate list. So you can always look at that delegate list later. Um, so that's another option. Probably I'm definitely going to set this up in my own ClickUp because this automation literally came out this week. So just wanted to brainstorm a couple solutions for you there, making this process easier and also coming up with a system. Sometimes systems aren't even like a, B, C, D, right? It's more like, okay, how do I make myself remember what I need to delegate when I don't have time to do it in the moment? This is that type of system we're creating. Tip number three, when it comes to delegating in ClickUp is utilizing workload view. If you're not familiar with workload view, this is on any level. You could do this on the list folder space or everything level, you can go ahead and add a workload view that is going to allow you to see your team's capacity who is over or under and reassign tasks accordingly, exactly like it says. So if you add a workload view, this is what it's going to look like. And I just want to give you a couple tips when it comes to utilizing this view. So here in this view, you can actually see the workload by a couple different things. Over here, you can do it by time estimates, tasks, sprint points, or custom fields. So if you see, if I go to tasks, then you can set everyone's capacity. It could either be the same for each person, or it could be customized for each person. I think the most accurate way is to use time estimates because every task could be weighted differently, right? You could have a task that could take five minutes and then one that could take three hours. So if you're using time estimates on your tasks, you'll be able to see, okay, Christy has 40 hours that she could be assigned tasks for the week. And on Monday, she has nine hours of tasks assigned to her out of her eight hour capacity. Jeff has 40 hours and on Wednesday, he's approaching capacity at five hours. If I added this task time estimate as eight hours, then you're gonna see it's gonna show orange. Let me do this. And that's gonna mean you're at capacity. So you're teetering the line, right? And you can click onto that person on any day and be able to see what those tasks actually are. 
You can also see this in one week, two week, or one month view of what each person's capacity is looking like. But I really love this view to actually get that real life look at everyone's workload. So let's just talk about, we already went through, you know, you can do it by time estimates, tasks, et cetera. So like you just saw, if you are in list view or in the task, Number one, you can show the time estimate column. So you would just search time estimate and bring that up. And then you can easily like assign time estimates to each task. Or if you're clicking into a task, the time estimate is going to be, let me put this one in. It's going to be up here until you add a time estimate and then it will show up down below the title. So super, super powerful tool in being able to see the workload, how much capacity each person has, how much is currently on their plate, et cetera. So that is tip number three. And lastly, tip number four is having a place for all of your training materials and resources, AKA what we love to use is our SOP library. So again, this is in our template vaults. Um, and so if I come into here and search SOP library, you're going to see just having one list to have all of your SOPs and training videos and instructions is so, so powerful because now the thing is as well, if you're just starting out with an SOP library, one list really should do the trick. You can see how the different statuses here are like to create in progress, review needs, edits, et cetera, et cetera. You can see when it was created, when it was updated, what category this falls into. But if you find yourself growing over time, which is the goal, especially if you are trying to delegate and hire more team members, then you may want to break up your SOP libraries into different categories and lists. Like it could be marketing SOPs, client delivery SOPs, et cetera. But starting with one is a great place. So basically what we do, just a couple tips here, is we have a task for each SOP that we want to create. Once you click into the SOP, we'll have any information that need, the person needs to get this SOP done. If you want to attach like images or any files to the SOP, you can do that at the bottom as well. And then we put Loom videos in here. Loom videos obviously are one of my favorite things. This is what I'm using to record this video now. And it's just really great to be able to say it's like a one minute task. You can just record yourself while doing it, stick it in a task, and then delegate this out to a team member. So having it in task is really, in a task is really great. Another thing and last thing I want to say about this is we used to, when wanting to delegate this to a team member, we would just go ahead and duplicate the task and put it where it belongs. It was like marketing to do or that person's task list. And then they would have the SOP. Well, what we do now and what it allows is to be way more dynamic is we'll actually take the link to that task. And then wherever it is, let's go to like marketing or let's go to like admin, admin tasks say we wanted to delegate this to a team member, what we would do is create a task called download meeting recordings, write SOP video, and then paste that task in there. So you could see here, it's right here. So that then if we ever need to update that SOP, we can just do it in the one place, which is the SOP library, because this link is going to be dynamic. So that person will always be able to reference it if there are any updates instead of having to update the actual body of the task anytime something changes in the process. So that is it. The four steps and four tips for making delegating easier in ClickUp. I hope that brought light to just some quick and pretty simple things that you can do to make the process of hiring and delegating just a little bit easier.
So I hope that video was helpful for you in bringing just some light to how you can use ClickUp to make the delegation process easier, not only for you, but also for your team member who's ready and willing to take on those tasks. If you are brand new to ClickUp and you're like, wow, this all seems amazing, but I don't even know where to start. We have so many amazing resources for you, both free and paid. If you're looking for free resources, even a free template, go ahead and check out DeSilvaLife.com slash freebies. I would highly recommend starting with the simple ClickUp system. But if you already know a good bit about ClickUp and you really want to sharpen your skills, then I recommend checking out our ClickUp course and our template vault. But one more thing before I sign off, I cannot wait to let you know that we are hosting a free live training this month called Scaling Your Online Business with ClickUp. I'm so excited to go through all the tips on how you can really maximize ClickUp for growth and efficiency to really grow and scale your business with ease. There are two different session dates, so make sure to check out the link and choose which one works best for you. You can also check out that page to get all of the details of what will be included in the session, and I hope to see you there. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for all the ClickUp tutorials, and I'll see you next time.